New Thought Media Network. We are a global broadcast network of positive music, media, and entertainment. Inspiring humanity's evolution along the journey of enlightenment and creating a world of love, peace, empowerment, and prosperity for all. New Thought Media Network. Positively inspiring. Live from a secure concrete bunker somewhere in Ohio, New Thought Media Network presents Pastor Michael Mangus with Friday's Fireside Chat, spiritual conversation for today. Here he is from the secret radio room, surrounded by thousands of watts, Pastor Michael Mangus. Welcome to one and all across the nation and around the world. It is time again for another fun-filled, thrill-packed, and always exciting edition of the Fireside Chat here on the New Thought Media Network. I am Pastor Michael Mangus broadcasting this evening from the secret radio room surrounded by thousands, and I mean thousands of watts in a secure concrete bunker somewhere, somehow, <laughs> in Akron, Ohio. It is so top secret here. And it requires such a high level of security that even Reverend Robert Brzezinski has no clue where my super secret Broadcast facility is located. <laughs> oh, we had one of those evenings of trying to get on the air here. And again, the crack engineering staff here at the Secure Concrete Bunker got me on the air. So thank you, crack staff. <laughs> oh, that's me. Hey, we have a wonderful show for you tonight. Please feel free to interact with us by posting your comment below on Facebook. And again, for all those shy people in our audience, again, please feel free to interact with me by email. That's pastormichaelmangus at gmail.com. Pastormichaelmangus at gmail.com. So the purpose of our fireside chat is to talk about contemporary issues from a new thought perspective. And as I keep saying over and over again, I want us all to have a new thought about all that is going on around us, not only here in the United States, but also around the world. And again, you don't have to agree with me. Now, Diego plays the Disclaimer Weekly professionally made by my good friend, Jay Selvers mostly because of the humor value. However, there is a serious part to that in that this show consists of my views, my opinions only. I want us all to deeply think about what is going on in the world and ask what my role is in bringing about a world that works for everyone. So did you miss me last week? Huh? Thank you, Diego, for running a best of. Myself, the world-famous Laura Topper, and also Gina, we were on retreat for Holmes Institute. And I must say, for an online retreat, it was pretty good. I received a candle in the shape of a lighthouse. Do you see that? Huh? This is what $35,000 gets you. <laughs> Anyhow, no. Um, but uh, we had a great retreat last weekend. Again, to symbolize, again, that we are the light of the world, that we are the lights going out into the world to 
Be the light. The conference theme was visioning the new now. And the reason being is because, again, it's like the, the ministry playbook has been taken out and torn up <laughs> because of COVID and other things. So what we're doing now is we're having to recreate everything. So congratulations this evening to the Denver campus of Holmes Institute, having their graduation here in one hour, being attended by our chief inspirational officer, the world-famous and ever-popular, the Reverend Robert Brzezinski. But I'd like to congratulate these wonderful students and colleagues. Those graduating tonight include Iman Duffy, Christina Jones, Kit Holmes, Jamie Migley, Steve Kin's father, and also Jeff Hargis. Again, uh, very much heart-filled congratulations to all of those wonderful students receiving their master's degree in consciousness studies this evening at Mile High Church. Well, we were scheduled to have Robert on this evening, the Reverend Robert Brzezinski. However, I got a, a note this afternoon saying, I'm not able to come because I have to go to this graduation. I understand, no problem. So you get one hour of me. That's right. <laughs> and we'll have a good time tonight. Oh, I wanted to show you my T-shirt. Hold on here. Turn towards the camera, Michael. <laughs> Now, normally, I would be attending Hamvention in Dayton, Ohio. However, for the second year in a row, it was canceled because of COVID concerns. However, mark your calendars for next year, <laughs> May 20th through the 22nd, when we will have the wonderful event. Amateur radio plays an important part in our country in providing emergency communications during wartime and also national uh, natural disasters. Skywarn, which is the volunteer arm of the National Weather Service, assists local meteorologists in tracking severe storms and also tornadoes. Yes, I am a certified radio geek <laughs> with not one, but two FCC licenses, one commercial, one amateur. When I embraced my radio geekdom, in 2015, I saw myself just like you see me today in front of a microphone broadcasting to the world. So 73, which in Morse code means best wishes, 73 to all my ham radio friends out there. And we will see you next year in Dayton. I will be there. We go into the news this evening. First up from CNN. New video is released showing Ronald Green's encounter with troopers before his death. CNN has obtained the body camera video from one of the Louisiana State Police troopers who arrived at the scene as the other officers attempted to arrest Ronald Green and had him on the ground. The new video is 30 minutes long and appears to show a different perspective from the scenes then recorded previously released by the Associated Press. CNN is currently reviewing the newly obtained body camera video. Green's death two years ago, is being relived as the videos from his encounter with the troopers are being released publicly. Esley Merritt, one of the attorneys representing the Green family, told CNN on Friday morning that the new video is from the perspective of a supervising trooper arriving on the scene. Merritt also added that it was video we just learned about and that 
we just gave them the AP permission to go ahead and to publish. The Associated Press on Wednesday had posted three clips totaling over two minutes in length. From the video, it said it was 46 minutes long. His family said that they have not been able and or given a chance to grieve him. I haven't processed what happened to him. If there's even such a way of properly processing. His mother, Mona Harden, told CNN's Don Lemon on Thursday. Green's family said police initially told him he died on impact when his car crashed on May 10th, 2019, after a police pursuit. Video obtained by the Associated Press and released this week shows Green face down on the road after the crash outside of the city of Monroe, after being tased and kicked by LSP officers, as he is telling them that he is scared. An initial crash report from the state police did not mention that there was a struggle between Green and the officers. Green died on the way to the hospital, according to the Louisiana State Patrol Criminal Investigations Division. Green's sister, Alana Wilson, said that she saw the initial batch of videos for the first time on Wednesday. She told CNN's Chris Como that authorities have sent the family on a runaround since his death, never giving them correct or full information. I'm still on the hunt and on the chase for justice for my brother, Wilson said. I can't even grieve my brother properly knowing that they did this to an innocent human being. The incident involves cover-up on many levels, she said, and the family is calling for accountability from everyone involved, particularly the officers who Harden said allowed him to just slowly die on the spot. What these guys did to my son and the cover-up that ensued behind all of that, someone has to stay focused, and my family will, said Harden, who told CNN Friday that she first saw the video at the invitation of the Louisiana governor last year. What they did to Ronnie, they will have to pay penalties. We're reading an article from CNN. In the three brief video clips posted by the AP on Wednesday, Green can be heard apologizing to the officers that night, saying that he was scared and supplicating for their mercy. Green's car door is opened and a taser goes off. Okay, okay, Green is heard saying, I'm sorry, I'm scared. Officer, I'm scared. I'm your brother. I'm scared. Moments after, or moments before, an officer approached Green's car, his weapon drawn, let me see your hands. After being tased, Green can be heard moaning while still on the ground and being put in handcuffs by one officer, while another officer kicks him several times. An officer can be heard saying, I got blood all over me, I hope this guy ain't got AIDS as Green continued to moan. At one point, an officer drags Green. The Associated Press reports that Green is left lying down, face down, moaning for more than nine minutes, while officers use sanitizing wipes to wash the blood off of their hands and faces. This is not in any of the video segments that the AP had posted online. I'm almost done. It says the release of these clips come after the U.S. Department of Justice Civil Rights Division are investigating the death, along with the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Western District of Louisiana and also the FBI. 
In a statement, the Louisiana State Patrol said it did not release the video and that it was not authorized or obtained by official sources. The LSP has said that it's been directed by investigating agencies not to release any evidence or further information on the case. The lawsuit also cites a, an emergency room physician who allegedly noted that different accounts about what happened to Green did not hold up. This killing of innocent black men and women has to stop. The tactics used to subdue him or her is excessive force. And as you heard, the family, this is two years ago. The family is still having a hard time processing it because they know that they're not getting correct answers from the police. Also in the news this week, why a North Carolina district attorney is not prosecuting the Andrew Brown Jr. killing, again also from CNN. On Tuesday morning, District Attorney Andrew Womble said that the fatal shooting of Andrew Brown Jr. by county sheriff's deputies was justified. He held a press conference explaining his decision, outlining his understanding of the law, and he played four video clips from the body-worn cameras of the officers at the scene. Well, how did he come to his conclusion? Womble came to his conclusion after reviewing evidence and considering the standards for judging the use of force by police officers. Womble said that the courts have held that officers can use deadly force to protect against deadly force from someone that they are trying to arrest or to take custody of someone who presents an immediate threat of death or serious injury to others unless apprehended immediately. Womble said in his review of the evidence based upon state law and Supreme Court rulings did not allow him to use 2020 vision of hindsight. The review must make allowance for the fact that police officers are often forced to make split second judgment in circumstances that are tense, uncertain, and rapidly evolving. When weighing the degree of force used, this is what Womble said, a prosecutor must pay careful attention to the facts and circumstances of each particular case, including the severity of the crime at issue, whether the suspect poses an immediate threat to the safety of officers or others, and whether he is actively resisting arrest or attempting to evade arrest by flight. Womble also said, I find the facts of this case clearly illustrate the officers who used deadly force on Andrew Brown Jr. did so reasonably and only when a violent felon used a deadly weapon to place their lives in danger. The family attorneys issued a statement on Tuesday saying that the DA is trying to whitewash the April 21st killing in Elizabeth City, North Carolina. To say that this shooting was justified, despite the known facts, is both an insult and a slap in the face to the Andrews family, the Elizabeth City community, and to rational people everywhere. The FBI has also announced that they have a civil rights investigation going on in this case. The sheriff's office could have assigned more or fewer deputies to serve the warrant 
or they could have used different vehicles or adjusting the time of day that served the warrant or adjusted their approach in any other way that they believed would have achieved the goal of taking custody of Brown. But Womble said that the deputies had an obligation to take Brown into custody. So my question is, why didn't you do that? Why didn't you take the man into custody? And when they approached him, Womble said he attempted to flee in a way that put them and others at risk for harm. A review of the incident, conducted by an outside expert, agreed that the shooting was in direct response to an imminent threat of serious physical harm. It also noted that the Sheriff's Department should evaluate how it serves warrants. I also see the need for an evaluation of tactics used to serve search warrants, arrest warrants, and perform vehicle takedowns and vehicle assault. The expert, his name is Paul Oil, he wrote. Oil wrote that his review was completed before opinions or rulings by the district attorney. I also recommended, this is the expert talking, I also recommended an increase in the documentation of pre-mission threat assessments and briefings. The tactical arena of law enforcement is ever-changing and a constant assessment of an agency's policies, procedures, and resources and training is a necessity in order to maximize safety for citizens, law enforcement personnel, and enhanced organizational professionalism. Now, this is what's causing the problem in Elizabeth City. The three deputies who fired the shot at Brown will be reinstated said Sheriff Tommy Wooten in a video statement after the district attorney announced the shooting was justified and no charges would be filed. Wooten called Brown's death a terrible and tragic outcome and said the entire team will be reconfigured and retrained. I have no words to say as far as what I just read. But we do need to keep speaking up for justice and peace. And we need to continue protesting in a peaceful, nonviolent manner. I saw this again on the Facebook feed. It says, pray for an end to COVID and peace in our streets. And again, I would like to add to that prayer, the end of racism and for justice. Our police and law enforcement officers have an extremely tough job to do. I have known many law enforcement officers over the years. They have a tough job to do. And again, like the article said, sometimes that they have to re react in the split second. But the way that I just described in those two articles is overkill, especially when the target is black men and women. So we, as people who claim to be spiritual and for love, we ask that our police officers do their job, and we ask our politicians to implement changes in education and training. And I would also like to recommend a better screening process. The targeting of especially black men and women must end now, period. Racism must end now. So again, what can you do? You can do a lot. Ask yourself, what is mine to do?
continue to demand changes in your cities or village police departments. That we can do. We can ask to see what is their policy in apprehension, also in pursuit. Have your center, yes, your center or church, sponsor a seminar on nonviolent communication and de escalation techniques. We can all do that. I remember a few years back that our wonderful former spiritual leader, Ken Gordon, went ahead and said in a letter from home office that if the world would like help in establishing a peaceful world to ask us, and that I know that we all can improve the peacefulness in our own hearts, and also be willing to take a look at any shadow stuff. And I know it's unpleasant, but see, what you don't understand is that if you go ahead and you keep it in the shadow and don't bring it to the light, what happens is that you're more than likely to act from the shadow instead of from the light. So every one of us, we can put on a nonviolent seminar. And I'm asking everyone to eliminate from their consciousness the need for violence and also to bring forth peace. We talk about oneness most every single week in our centers. I'm asking everyone to let's start practicing that. We all have a part to play in bringing about a world that does work for everyone. All right. Well, good evening to you. Welcome to the Friday Evening Fireside Chat. Here on the New Thought Media Network, I am Pastor Michael Mangus. We will take a break after a few announcements here. Yours truly is parking himself at Summit CSL. For more information, go to summitcsl.org. There you will find all kinds of wonderful information about our Sunday gathering online at 1030 Eastern, 730 Pacific time. Grab your cup of coffee or tea and join us. I really do believe that we have one of the best services in New Thought because it really has a good balance of meditation, message, music, for you to have your own spiritual experience. So this Sunday, we will continue our series on the spiritual quality of beauty with the music and message given by our own musical director, John Miller. Please go on to summitcsl.org for more information about the Zoom call, and please join us. It's a lot of fun. We would love to have you visit us this Sunday. Our service is also simulcast on the Summit Spiritual Center of Akron Facebook page. Our Facebook page also has past broadcasts of the world-famous and ever-popular Fireside Chat. And also, when yours truly is praying on the New Thought Media Network, which will be this evening at 10.15 Eastern, and also at 10.15 Eastern tomorrow morning. Yours truly has double duty tomorrow. So anyhow, so just wanted to let you know that. The one thing that everyone can do tonight to help us is to share the Fireside Chat to their Facebook page and other spiritual new thought groups that they are involved in. For more information on how to do that, please feel free to contact me. I'm currently open for individual practitioner sessions, also Sunday speaking, and also ceremonies, weddings, and so forth, which I'm getting a lot of right now. So for more information, email me at pastormichaelmangus at gmail.com for more information. There is so much programming 
now on the New Thought Media Network that it's really hard for me. <laughs> I could spend the next half hour telling you all the programs, but I'm not going to. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> and you can go to ntmedia.org. And I mean, there's wonderful Course in Miracles studies, wonderful New Thought teaching. We have prayer twice a day. Our Science of Mind and Spirit lecture series, which is tomorrow, with practitioner Rochelle McGrady. Uh, I think I mispronounced her name. Put that back up again, Diego, if you could. Yes, uh, Rochelle McCreary. Michelle, uh, so Rochelle came from one of the churches that I was involved with up in Cleveland. Thank you, Diego. That was very nice. So again. Go on our website, ntmedia.org. You'll get the whole schedule there. Now, we are asking for your support here. We are offering all kinds of wonderful programs during the week. And that Robert has bills to pay. For us to progress, for us to be able to do the type of programming that we want to do here on NC Media, we're asking lovingly for your support. You have the wonderful blessing to be able to give here. You're giving into good soil here. But also you get a double blessing, and that double blessing is that through your contribution, you affect lives around the globe. We may be the only new thought center people come in contact with, but they're able to do that because of this wonderful technology. So please, if you could go to ntmedia.org slash donate, we would really appreciate your help. All right. So we're going to take a break right now. This is the Friday evening fireside chat here on the New Thought Media Network. New Thought Media Network is on the rise. We're looking to grow with you. Do you have technical media experience? or perhaps a desire to learn. Are you willing to volunteer your precious time and attention? We share this message to benefit all. If you possess a computer with a camera and a microphone, we will share our knowledge with you. Behind the scenes or being the star, let us bless our one. Contact us at info at ntmedia.org. The views and opinions expressed by Pastor Michael Mangus are generally right. However, they are his own and do not reflect the views and opinions of New Thought Media Network, Centers for Spiritual Living, or any other person living or dead. As they say in the 12-step recovery program, take what you like and leave the rest. Here again is Pastor Michael. And thank you very much, Jay Stevens, who I would have went ahead and attended Hamvention with this weekend. <laughs> He's also an amateur radio operator. Well, COVID-19 is still with us. Total number of cases, 32,855,010. In one day, we've had 
27,857 new cases. Cases in the last seven days, 194,541. Total number of deaths, including my mother, Edda Mangus, 584,975. We're getting down there in the numbers. And the reason being is because of the vaccine. That's the reason why the numbers are decreasing, especially the death count, especially among our elderly. I mean, this number recently was up to 400, excuse me, uh, 4,000 a day. Now we're at 639. Still too many, but it's coming down though. And again, by the way, I mentioned my mother weekly, not to get your sympathy. What I'm sharing with you is that we have all been impacted by COVID-19. All of us. And that still, even though that many of the governors have told us that they are lifting mask requirements and also distancing, they're doing that for people who are vaccinated. Total vaccine doses delivered, 352 million, administered over 279 million. Over the age of 18 vaccinated with one dose is 60.5%. That's pretty good. Especially with all the vaccine hesitancy that I sense out there. And then my governor, (laughs) Mike DeWine, gets called to the carpet for taking $5 million dollars out of COVID-19 relief and putting it into a lottery (laughs) to increase people motivation to go get the vaccine. And guess what? It's working. (laughs) I was talking to a friend of mine today and (laughs) <laughs> he was saying to me, well, that's a shame. You know, they should have put that money towards something else. Well, listen, the most important thing here is to, again, to encourage people. Now, again, I can't tell you to go get vaccinated. and I'm, I wouldn't do that. But I really am encouraging people to look past the fears and to see the life-changing benefits that we all have by going out and getting one or two simple shots. So what you need to know from CNN, the European Union will begin to ease travel restrictions to the bloc, with the EU Council agreeing on measures to allow fully vaccinated foreign visitors in. So that little card that you got when you got vaccinated, that's going to be your passport. The Indian states are facing shortages of a drug used to treat black fungus, a rare and potentially fatal infection that is increasingly being detected in COVID-19 patients. And in the U.S., the average daily pace of coronavirus vaccines is down almost 50% from its April peak a U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, their latest data shows. Okay. So what would love do in this situation? Like many of the things that we have recommended on this program, It's not only to keep you safe, but also to help others stay safe. 
So the first thing that we can do is this. We can still follow the science by, again, wearing a mask according to the CDC guidelines. Again, that those guidelines are changing because, again, that the vaccine is effective. So you do not need to wear your mask as much as you did in the past. But you have to be vaccinated, though. It was so nice. I hugged my sister yesterday. After two years, my only sister. <laughs> that was so nice. Again, watch your distance. Wash your hands. Crack open a window. We are not out of this yet here. COVID-19 information is <laughs> best not to get it off of Facebook or social media. Go to the CDC website. Go to the WHO website. There you will find correct current information about this. <laughs> One of my friends, who's a newsman from a local TV station, told me his mother-in-law saw on Facebook that the vaccine is of the devil. Um, not true. Okay. <laughs> and again, please study the science before deciding not to get the vaccine. As for me in my house, we got vaccinated after we researched it. And found through peer reviewed reports that the vaccine is safe and highly effective. Now, I challenge any one of you out there if you have any peer reviewed studies or reports contrary to what I just said, please send them to me, Pastor Michael Mangus at gmail.com. Would love to read them. But the, see, the stuff that I get sent, though, is not peer-reviewed and probably comes from a foreign government trying to sow discord among us here in the United States. Again, for all of you who are hesitant Remember the countries that are hardest hit, like India and Brazil? They would give the right arm for a vaccine right now. And we have it. You can go to any pharmacy, any health department. Soon it will be available at doctor's offices. so that you can get a shot. Again, we have been blessed in the United States with a plentiful supply of this life-saving liquid. And again, in India, the reports that I have received, they have had so many cremations there that they're running out of wood. So we will get through this by, again, guiding our thinking. We're not victims here. Know that there's light at the end of the tunnel. And again, for a while now, we will still have to follow the science by wearing a mask. I know that my comfort level goes down when I'm in a crowd. And even though that I'm vaccinated, I don't know if the person next to me is. So I still wear a mask, and I probably will for quite some time here. Again, avoid social gatherings outside of your bubble. If you're getting together, make sure that you're getting together and that the group is vaccinated. And again, finally, please for Goodness sakes, take this seriously here. And I know that I've been saying this on past fireside chats for the past year. But I really want us to get through this here. 
and to be able to tell our children and grandchildren, yes, it was a tough time, but this is what I learned. I learned that I'm a spiritual being. I got my priorities straight. There's many people choosing not to go back to work, or at least not to go back to the job that they had before, because it was life-draining. So there's wonderful things that are coming out of us spending this time during this pandemic. And for goodness sakes, even though that many new thought centers are opening up, they're doing so under the advisement of their local and state health departments. Please follow their guidelines. Even if you do not have to wear a mask because you're vaccinated, please follow the instruction of the ushers and also of your lead minister. Just wear a mask. We're coming out of this. However, we need to come out of this safely. And again, being inside right now and not moving very much is still not a very good idea. So again, the all clear has not been issued yet. So we all need to take care of each other. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. How are you doing? This is the Friday evening fireside chat here on the New Thought Media Network. I am its humble host. Pastor Michael Mangus, we were supposed to have a guest this evening in Reverend Robert Brzezinski. There were some wonderful things said during this past week. The shift hit the fan on the Science of Mind and Religious Science, a deeper conversation Facebook page. (laughs) I'm going to leave it to Reverend Robert to explain it. The whole idea, and I'll just mention a little bit, what happened was is that there were many people who, there was a topic brought up about racism and about Trumpism, and that it had a variety of responses. So Robert put together a 15-minute video, and that he said basically that we need to be having these kind of hard conversations. And we have those kind of hard conversations here on the Friday evening fireside chat. Because it really does progress us on. Well, Michael, I was taught in my Science of Mind 101 class that we shouldn't focus on conditions. I agree. But see, the the challenge has been that the conditions continue. So what needs to happen here is a whole shift in consciousness, in race consciousness. And the way to do that is by speaking up and speaking out, giving people the opportunity to change their mind. All right. We have time. I don't have time to read this whole story, but I found it interesting here. It says QAnon and other conspiracy theories are taking hold in churches, and pastors are fighting back. This is from the Associated Press. The congregation was in the middle of an online service when a longtime churchgoer in her 60s texted her pastor to complain that his prayer lamenting the assault on the U.S. Capitol in January was too political. the mentioning of social issues. 
is not political. I got accused of that in Pittsburgh. People saying that I was too political. And the whole idea is to take the politics out and to say, okay, this is what's going on here. I'll go on with this article. It says the women later unloaded and loaded a barrage of conspiracy theories. The election of Joe Biden was a fraud. The insurrection was instigated by Black Lives Matter and also Antifa activists disguised as Donald Trump supporters. The FBI was in on all of it, and the day would soon come, she said, when all the evil and the corruption would come to light and the truth would be revealed. Startled and moved to tears, Pastor David Wright told the woman that she has been tricked by lies. You need to know how crazy this is, he said to his congregant at the Markey Church in Michigan. It's a rural region with around 2,500 residents that voted two to one for Trump. Pastor said this, you have been with my family and in my home, and I care for you but you are dabbling in darkness. You are telling me it's giving you hope. And I'm telling you as your pastor that it is evil. The two haven't spoke since. And more than likely, she told other church members, and they're probably not members either. I go on. It says, details emerging from the investigation into hundreds of Capitol rioters have cast an unsettling light on the toxic roles that fringe religious beliefs and QAnon conspiracy theories are playing in shaking big and small churches across the nation. Trump's false insistence that he won the 2020 election may have incited the mob, but it's also pointing to a dangerous intersection of God and politics. A Kentucky man, whom the FBI charged as the first to enter the Capitol through a broken window, saw himself as fighting a holy war on behalf of his president, and in a booking photo, wore a t-shirt that quoted Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the sixth chapter, the eleventh verse, which reads, Pull, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Jacob Chansley, the shirtless man dubbed the QAnon shaman for his distinctive fur hats, horns, and also American flag paint, also said a prayer from the vice president's U.S. Senate dais, thanking the Heavenly Father for allowing us to get rid of the communists, the globalists, and the traitors within our government. In the photos from the Capitol on January 6th, religion abounds. Jesus 2020, proud American Christian. Those were some of the banners that were displayed. A flag with an Ithacus or a Jesus fish, and a man in a jacket advertising the Knights of Columbus Catholic fraternity among them. For pastors like Rice, whose church members were hundreds of miles away from Washington, D.C., and by and large abhorred the attacks, the lawlessness on that day have spurred them to speak out against the rising tide of misinformation. Christian nationalism, they say, too, have gripped their congregations and evangelical life in the United States. Pastor Rice said this, Something disturbing has happened with evangelicals in this country, where we have been prone to conspiracies and believing the worst about our enemies, where we end up placing the Republican Party and ourselves as Americans first before true Christianity. Pastor Rice has led his Baptist church for six years and doesn't identify with any party.
The trend has led a group of more than 500 influential evangelical pastors and thinkers and faith leaders to publish an open letter recently condemning radicalized Christian nationalism and the rise of violent acts by radicalized extremists using the name of Christ. The signers of the letter, titled Say No to Christian Nationalism, includes the late Reverend Billy Graham's granddaughter and Reverend Jim Wallace, who is the founder of Sojourners, which is a prominent progressive Christian advocacy program. This joining of politics and faith has been influential for decades, but was given a much bigger megaphone by Trump, he said. We have seen that those who embrace Christian nationalism are more than likely to believe in conspiracies. So I mentioned that article here. To say that, watch where you get your news. The trusted news sources that I use here, CNN and AP, are again vetted news sources. Your mind right now is a battlefield with all of these influences. I don't believe in a personal devil, but I do believe that there are individuals that are trying, unfortunately, and are led astray because of a few falsehoods. So what I'm saying to everyone out there is this, can we practice love? Can we go ahead and with the people who we disagree with, can we go ahead and we can listen? I'll talk more about this next week with Robert, but we need to be having these conversations in our churches and to be calling out people who (laughs) unfortunately are not being led by true information. And this can be done in love, I believe. All right. I'm getting the high sign from Diego. He's saying one minute. So, again, thank you for joining us this evening. If you'd like more information about us, please go to ntmedia.org. There you will find all kinds of information about our programming and also If you could go to the donate page, we're looking for monthly donors here. If you can donate on a monthly basis, 10, 20, 30, 50, or even more, what happens with your donation is we get to take this powerful message to the world. And you get that double blessing, as I always keep saying. ntmedia.org slash donate. Well, time for me to go here, and I will be back on the New Thought Media Network here at 1015 Eastern for evening prayer. So, from all of us to all of you, Pastor Michael Mangus wishing you a wonderful evening and weekend. Thanks for joining us this evening for Friday's Fireside Chat with Pastor Michael Mangus. Join us again next week at 8 Eastern, 6 Mountain for more spiritual conversations for today. For more information and replays of past shows, please visit the New Thought Radio and Media Network's Facebook page. Until next week, may God bless you richly and abundantly.